the thing that I want to make clear is when did winning not become the main thing? I always say keep the main thing the main thing. Right? You have priorities, and I think you have 1A and 1B. 1A is winning. 1B is playing to the standard. Now, you can win, but not play to the standard, and you're still unfulfilled. You can play to the standard and not win, and you're still unfulfilled. So, so what matters? According to Jason Kelsey, the temperature of the team is on edge right now because they have not been playing up to the standard. Even though we are 2-0 and and 1A has been accomplished, should we be worried about 1B or could the lack thereof turn around and bite us in the ass? Look, man, just in case y'all forgot, this is who I am. This is right here is what I do. This is the Diamond Crew. But I want to give a shout out to my G's and my OG's. But you already know what to do. But if you're new to the channel and you like content like this, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to like. I need you to comment. I need you to subscribe. I need you to share this. I need you to hit that notification bell. So you always up to date. Look, man, real quick, I want to get into the things that we've seen from DeAndre Swift because they cannot go unnoticed. DeAndre Swift blazed his way to a career high of 175 rushing yards and one touchdown propelling the Philadelphia Eagles to a thrilling 34 to 28 victory over the Minnesota Vikings in week two. And the Eagles running back DeAndre Swift wins NFC offensive player of the week. Look, man, let's get into the preview uh, of the Eagles versus the Bucks. But one thing I want to get into real quick is that the Eagles have given up a league's worst seven touchdown passes through the first two games real quick man let's welcome you guys to our monday night football preview you know where we're gearing up for an exciting showdown between tampa bay buccaneers and our philadelphia eagles now let's dive into some key points and opinions on this matchup first off despite the eagles not quite hitting their stride recently they have managed to start the season off 2-0. And, and there's a strong argument, you know, that they boast the superior roster. Baker Mayfield and Mike Evans have undoubtedly made their presence felt early in the season. But we should not underestimate the Buccaneers' uh, pretty good defense. The offense... The offensive game plan, excuse me, for the Philadelphia Eagles should revolve around establishing a successful running game early on and exploiting the Buccaneers cornerbacks. You know, if they can force the Buccaneers defense to respect the run, it should open up some opportunities downfield. Um, defensively, pressure on Baker Mayfield and disrupting his rhythm is going to be crucial. The Eagles cornerbacks. Darius Slay and James Bradbury will have their hands full with uh, this talented duo of Evans and Goodwin. Slowing them down will be key to the Eagles' success. The run game, while not being a major concern, should still not be taken lightly. One concern for me is the slot cornerback role, especially with Maddox being out for the rest of the year. You know, it'll be interesting to see who steps up among, will it be Sidney Brown or James Bradbury, Eli Ricks or Josh Jobes? With such depth, the Eagles should be able to cover this position effectively. Perhaps uh, we might even see a dime set to bring some extra speed onto the field. In addition to the cornerbacks, the Eagles need to have strong performances from their linebackers and their safeties. Now, the big question, the prediction. I'm leaning towards the Eagles coming out on top uh, in a close contact, in a close contest, excuse me, with a final score of 30 to 27. You know, but as Kylie Kelsey once said, can we ever just cruise? Look, man, that's the lingering question, you know, for this matchup. 
Look, share your thoughts and your predictions in the comments. And let's get ready for some Monday night football action. Because I'm super ready, man. I can't wait. Um, You know, as we get ready for this game, we have come to find out that Eagles cornerback James Bradbury, safety, Reed Blankenship, and running back Kenny Gainwell have been practicing. Um, and let's go over a few of these roster moves uh, since we weren't able to speak about it. Um, we've uh, signed punter Braden Mann to the practice squad and released punter Aaron Sipos from the practice squad. I think that's a great move. Um, we've been trying to get rid of Aaron Sipos for some while, for some time now. Um, he hasn't been doing well, in my opinion. So shout out to Howie Roseman for making that happen. Um, we also signed Britton Covey to the active roster, which I still don't really understand. And we also signed running back Brian Kobach and also linebacker Kyron Johnson and cornerback Tywan Mullen to the practice squad in place of Vontae Maddox on injury reserve because he has that pec injury. And that's the question, man. I got to keep bringing it up. Who is going to take over that nickel cornerback spot? It's crucial into the, uh, to the Eagles' success. Um, so now I kind of want to talk about the beef that y'all said that um, Jalen Hurts and A.J. Brown um, have. You know, according to Brown, him and Jalen Hurts are not beefing. He says the incident captured during last week's game with Hurts was not about targets. He labeled the interaction as a discussion, admitted that he uh, was emotion. He was emotional and he, his emotions were high. And, you know, basically you know, they're pushing each other to be better. You know, that's the goal here. And, and we cannot be mad at that. You know what I mean? These guys need to continue to push each other and hold each other accountable. So we're all good. No beef, you know, no issues. I never thought it was no issues. I just thought that it was, uh, you know, just a, 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 a talk in between two great players. Um, and, uh, you know, according to reports, it wasn't um, hurts who Jalen was even uh, mad at. I think it was more so it was uh, Brian Johnson, but I think he has a, a point because I was pissed off at Brian Johnson early on in the game before he uh, adjusted. You know, but while, but while we talking about um, great players, good players, uh, I want to talk about what we've seen from Jalen Carter, man. Jalen Car Carter is turning out to be a player that we all can rely on, and, is, and it's looking like we're going to be able to rely on him um, for years to come. So according to PFF, um, his performance in week two of the 2003 NFL season, Jalen Carter of the Philadelphia Eagles, he continues to impress as the, the top rookie with a remarkable grade of 90.2. This marked the second consecutive uh, week where he held the highest grade among all rookies in the league. Can we hear defensive rookie of the year? Could we hear rookie of the year? I don't know. Carter, who was the Eagles' first-round draft pick, achieved the rare uh, feature of maintaining a grade above 90 in his first two games. Look, man, that's major work. In week two, uh, it was not the same as his first game, you know, where he managed three quarterback hurries and over 25 snaps. You know, this could be attributed more to the defensive strategy employed by Minnesota Vikings rather than the shortcoming of Jalen's on Jalen's part. The Vikings offensive line was focused on containing him, um, often provided extra protection to minimize his impact. As a result, Carter had to deal with help blocks on more than 64% of his past rush attempts. I want to talk about Seth Joyner, man, because he said um, he's been drawing intriguing comparisons between Jalen Carter and the legendary Jerome Brown, and we all love Jerome Brown. Joyner, a former Philadelphia Eagle linebacker himself, sees echoes of Brown's tenacity and impact in Carter's rookie performance. Much like Brown, who was a dominant force for the Philadelphia Eagles defensive line in his era, Carter early success uh, is impressive. You know, his grades are impressive and it hints at a potential to become a, a better player and a disruptive force for the team. Uh, while it's still early 
and it's, it's still tough to make that definitive comparison. The parallels Joyner sees between the two players offer Eagle fans a tantalizing glimpse into a potential bright future for Dreeland Carter. But listen here, man. If you still tuned in, you know, and you and you feel like this video helped you out, man, make sure you do the channel a favor, man. Make sure you like this. Make sure you comment. Make sure you subscribe. You know, make sure you hit that notification bell. Make sure you share this, man, so you never miss this work. And there might be somebody out there uh, who's looking for content like this, man. But look, man, I appreciate all y'all do for Hada. I appreciate the likes. I appreciate the subs. You know, we're going to continue to bring this work. But for now, out of out.